Hello, 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 BQ here from the King of the Mountain Radio YouTube channel with today's discussion question. Want to have a little fun with you guys. First of all, I'm slowly but surely becoming the number one source, number one channel for the fans of Global Force Wrestling. Put out a lot of content, some uh, discussion questions, some vlogs, breaking news, and of course the flagship show, the King of the Mountain podcast covering impact each week. So please subscribe to the channel and good things will happen. All your wildest dreams will come true, I assure you. So here's the discussion question for today. I want to have a little fun because uh, since the world title, the global title picture right now, or the title holder is uh, so controversial at the moment, we are assuming that next week, not next week, but next month at Destination X that we're going to see a new global champion. Regardless of what happens with the suspension or, you know, uh, if, if he gets charged, not charged, guilty, not guilty, whatever. I think the company sees this live uh, show as an opportunity to move out of that shadow for a little bit. And if they want to come back to El Patron when things uh, clear up, that's fine. You know, but as far as doing the whole making him the face of the company, this is an opportunity to, I don't want to say right the wrongs, but just to move away from it for a little bit. And I think this is the show to do it on, being the uh, semi-live show, because if you start doing it during the tapings, then you, you know, uh, you lose the sense of um, surprise. So here's my question for you today. Leave something in the comments and leave a thumbs up before you go to. Uh, who do you think should take the world title off Alberto L. Patron next? Whether it's at Destination X or whether it's just in general. I want to know who you think. Let's talk about a few of the options. There is, and, and some of these are not going to be realistic, okay? They, they, they're realistic, but they're not, you know, because it might be a face-face feud uh, or, or someone who's not quite there yet. All right, Eli Drake, I think he's someone that we all want to see as a world champion, um, especially by the end of the year. He has not been booked like a world champion. He has not been booked like a champion, period. That is that is kind of the problem. He's a modern-day Roddy Piper where he's a talker, gets over talking, but and the ring work is good, but when it comes to wins and losses, he's not really getting the job done. There's Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley has been in the title picture for the majority of the last year, year and a half. He wants another title shot. I don't think we really want to see it. It's not that Bobby Lashley title runs are bad because I I have gone on to say he's, he's been the best world champion in wrestling when he holds it. Uh, as far as being a don dominant heel champion. All right. So he dominates and he's not a coward heel. He doesn't run. You know, just as far as being a good heel champion, I really thought he was the best and very believable. But do we want to see another Bobby Lashley title run? He held the ch the title, well, he won the title last year at Slammiversary. He was the champion at Bound for Glory. He was the champion at this year's Slammiversary. So do we really want him to be the champion of the next Bound for Glory? I think we should see something different. There's EC3, Ethan, Ethan Carter... The third. He's starting to connect a little bit more as a heel right now. Not quite tapping into the magic that he had a couple years ago, but he's starting to slowly get there. I still think he's missing a counterpart um, in the form of a bodyguard or a valet or a rock star spud. I think he's kind of missing that. I think the really bright ring attire is, is really not heelish. But I think he's always worn it like that. I mean, I'm trying, even trying to think to a couple years ago. I think he's always had brighter colors, but I think we kind of need to see some dark trunks, if you feel me. But I'm getting to the point now that an EC3 title run, I think, would be pretty good. However, I know he's beefing for the mid-card title, if you want to call it that, the Impact Grand Championship. So, don't know. But I have some... Uh, I have some a, a good feeling that this is a good time for EC3 to be the champion. I think he's missing an element, though. Eddie Edwards. He hasn't been in the title picture for a while. People weren't real high on his title run. I liked it because he's one of my favorites. I was there when he won it. Um, I don't think this is the right time for Eddie to reclaim. It's good to keep him out of the title picture for a little while. 
And I don't think by any means he's been like busted down to the mid card scene, but he was just involved in a blood feud for the last several months since losing the world title. You know, they could they could uh, spin it to where he kind of wants a, a legit rematch without Davy Richards involved. You know, with him kind of out of the picture. But I'm not so sure this is the Eddie Edwards time either. Then there's Moose. Um, Moose just re up for three years. He's here for the long haul. He's here to make impact great, so to speak. He wants to build something. There's something to be said about someone who wants to carve their own path. You know, look at the NBA. Kyrie Irving has been in the NBA Finals three years, has a championship ring, and now he's saying, you know, maybe it's everyone's dream to go to the Finals, to win a ring, to play with LeBron, but I want to go do my own thing. And that is very respectable because not enough people do that. And I'm not saying they should or shouldn't. I'm just saying not enough people do that. Most people will will jump at the opportunity to the, for the next level as soon as possible. And you know, I talked on the podcast before about being a, you know, me as a man, I don't move on to the next task unless I actually completed the first one. And that's kind of what I held up held against Mike Bennett a little bit. Moose is the opposite of that. So I think he would be good champion. Especially if he drops the mid card, uh, drops the grand championship, maybe he's in line for the world world title because that's that's something that kind of has happens in wrestling. Someone holds a mid card title for quite some time, you know, um, and then they're kind of they kind of drop it, but that kind of means because they're next in line for the world title. So I think Moose is a good option, and I'm 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 100 behind Moose. He's being a company man. I'm 100 percent putting the title on this guy. X-Factor right here. X-Divisions. Matt Seidel. So we know that a Destination X is going to be Matt Seidel versus Lashley. And the winner gets the title match that they desire. Because Lashley wants a world title. Matt Seidel wants a shot at the X-Division title. But he didn't really say that. He just he he implied that he wanted an X-Division title shot. Maybe he somehow beats Lashley. And somehow gets a shot at the world title. Would it be a good thing or a bad thing if he was to win the global championship? Is it going to be, oh, here's another ex-WWE guy, even though he hasn't been in the company for years and spent a lot of time in the Ring of Honor and won uh, tag titles and whatever there? So, I think that's an interesting dynamic there. Um, if they were somehow able to put the title on him, I think that would be fun. It'd be very interesting. And then there's James Storm. He's been out of the picture for... uh, Because he was injured at Bound for Glory. Not Bound for Glory, but Slammiversary. He was injured at the hands of Ethan Carter III. He's someone that I think everybody wants to see get another good world title run in. Because, let's face it, he's probably going to leave for NXT at the end of this contract. Not because he's unhappy with the company, but... As I've said, once you've done everything in the company, you know, you might as well go to the next level. And he showed loyalty. He came back, got a tag team title run. I think he deserves a global title run. I would have liked to see him actually unify the titles or to be the last uh, TNA title. Or, uh, I'm sorry, TNA champion or Impact champion. You know, I think that would have been that would have been like Paul Pierce hitting his last shot in the NBA against the Celtics. You know, it would have been very iconic to do that. They didn't go that route. The global title is something f- fairly new. It was going to have its own legacy, so it's not quite the same for James Storm, but I think he needs to have one good world title run. However, I think he should win it at Bound for Glory. I don't know if you know we want to have some kind of like miraculous comeback and he takes the title off El Patron at Destination X. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of different options. I want to know what you guys think, who you think should take the title off him. I am going, it's a tie between me, between, for me, between Moose and Matt Seidel. Um, James Storm is my number one. I just don't think it's the time for James Storm. Maybe you guys got another idea of someone else in mind. I really want to know what you guys think. So let's have a little fun with this one. Subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. And then even stick around or come back and, and respond to some of the other comments you see. All right, this is BQ. King of the Mountain Radio, and I'm out.